Yo, Short Box Nation, the new friends joining us for the first time. Welcome to episode 245. I'm your host, Botter Milligan. What you're about to listen to is my interview with the incredible and talented Sanford Green, which was recorded at Collective Con this past weekend. For those of you unfamiliar with Sanford Green's work, he is one of the best comic artists currently active in the industry. His artwork has graced the pages for many comic book publishers and various series, some of them including Marvel Comics Power Man and Iron Fist series, DC Comics Legend of Super superheroes, and a slew of creator-owned books like Image Comics, Bitterroot, and the original webcomic series 1000. I was fortunate enough to talk with Sanford about all of this and more, most notably growing up on hip-hop and comics and having the opportunity to recently work with hip-hop legend producer Pete Rock. Before we kick this episode off, I want to remind our new listeners and future short boxers to subscribe to the podcast on whatever your favorite podcast app is, whether that's iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, Google Play Music, and more. Subscribe to the short box to stay up to date with our new episodes and interviews just like this one, and make sure to follow us on social media by searching for The Short Box Jacks. Without further ado, our Sanford Green interview starts now. Short Box Nation, uh, I, next up on my Collective Con interview uh, list is a man that a lot of you guys love and a lot of you guys have reached out and said, man, could we please hear an interview in his words? Uh, I'm happy to announce I'm standing right by Sanford Green, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, 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 hello. For those of you that are not aware, Sanford Green is the co-creator and artist for Images Bitter Roots comic, as well as the creator of the web-based comic book series 1000. And the artist for everyone's favorite dynamic duo, that's right, Power Man and Iron Fist, he drew that series as well. Sanford, man, how are you enjoying Collective Con so far, man? Oh, it's been great. Um, just really enjoying the, uh, the weather. I think that's the, the oh, yeah. thing that I love right now is that weather is not too hot. Though it's been a little schizophrenic, where you had a superstorm yesterday, and now oh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, oh, it's Florida, man. Yeah, I know, <laughs> like right? Florida, like I was going to say, time. you know what? This is you know Florida, even though it's up, you know, upper state Florida, but uh, it's still Florida none- nonetheless. Yeah. So, but it's been great, man. Awesome, Sanford, and you're no stranger to the to the con run. I mean, I, I ran into you a few times at uh, at Heroes Con. I know that you tend to do that con a lot. I think right. you just came off a of con prior to this one, correct? Um, dude, it's all a blur. I don't know where I'm at right now. <laughs> what day is this? I know I, I did, um, let's see. Oh, Emerald City. Um, that's about a month ago now. But, yeah. uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's a lot of shows these days. There's a lot of things happening. And, uh, you know, um, uh, gonna be at Heroes in a few weeks, months. Yep. Since June. June. Yeah. See, it's all a blur. So. <laughs> You know, trying to uh, keep keep up with everything. So when I when I ran into you at Heroes Con last year, one of the bigger things that you were promoting, aside from talking about um, the artwork and working on uh, Power Man and, and Iron Fist, was your original uh, web based comic book series One Thousand. Right. How has that been? Uh, it's been great. Uh, we won a uh, Ringo Award for best web comic series, wow, which is fantastic. pretty pretty dope. Um, did not see that coming. Uh, thank, thank, uh, thank everyone that voted for, uh, for it. Um, a lot of it was, um, because the Ringo Awards are industry, I think it's industry and fans, but I think it's mostly industry that votes for, uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the SAG Awards, you know, for, for, for acting. Well, that's got to be. So it's kind of kind of cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and if it's industry voted, I mean, it's got, got to be kind of cool to know that your peers, are like recognizing your work, you know. Hey man, you know, if you politic enough, you you'll get a few. <laughs> you get a few votes. So so what made you go through go to the the web-based comic book route? And and I think prior to me hitting record, we kind of talked about how um, sometimes there's a negative connotation with web-based comics, right. you know, especially with someone that like you that has worked with an uh, image, a Marvel, right. etc. Uh, did you get any type of feedback or or questions like what based comics, man? Like what? <laughs> well, you know, I green. Come on. I, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I kind of watched those guys. Uh, Web Webtoons is the uh, the actual publisher, uh-huh. but um, 
pair of glasses, please. Wait, these guys stop. Yeah. Like but um but yeah, you know, I watched those guys, you know, from afar. And, um, at the time, the ed- editor in chief, Tom Akel, he, he was a friend or is a friend. Um, and he told me, he said, Hey, man, keep an eye out for this company. They could be a pretty big, you know, power here in the next couple of months. And, um, so, you know, it, it, it came that time where he reached out and said, Hey, man, they're making some serious moves. They, they're going after big creators and they want you know this really cool content they want to kind of get their themselves into the american market because uh webtoons is a korean based company okay <clears throat> so they, but they got you know pretty much all of asia on lock you wow. know um but now they're they're pretty international you know they're all over so um he reached out and said hey man now's the time and he told me what they were offering in terms of you know uh compensation to come over and create and um it's honestly two to three times more than i ever gotten at marvel of dc so i was like okay that's that korean <laughs> that dollar <laughs> yeah there's a, yeah they do it they do it a little bigger there so um I was, I was like yeah and plus it was something that i had aspired to having and um it just made me that much more excited to do it and i imagine it, i mean it's definitely something that probably helped diversify your portfolio gave you a different exposure different audience that you're working you know that oh yeah in front of yeah absolutely yeah i mean just to be able to um to have uh that that variety of uh, audience i mean uh, uh, you know it's it's funny when you have for lack of better words, you have these little teenagers coming up to your booth and they're all excited and yeah. they go, oh, you created it. And I'm like, wow, that's a whole, but that's what it's all about. It's like bringing in a new audience, you know, as a creator, you know, any creator, I mean, that should be our goal. Our aspiration is to broaden our, our, uh, our scope in terms of, uh, creativity and bringing in, uh, you know, some new, uh, viewership. Congratulations again on the success of, of a thousand web based comic Thanks. series. Another, you know, just kind of talking about an, another body of work that I think is getting a lot of attention that you're attached to is, is Bitter Roots. Yeah. The, the comic book series from Image Comic Books. Yeah. Um, I, I know, you know, just hanging out on Twitter and, and the comic book side of Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Bitter Roots is, is constantly kind of being brought up as being, you know, one of the, the more fresher yep. things coming out of Image. Right. Can you talk about the, well, for anyone that isn't aware of Bitter Roots, what is Bitter Roots about? Um, it's about a family of monster hunters set during the Harlem Renaissance. Cool. And they use steampunk technology and alchemy to deal with this infestation of monsters. And uh, you as a reader will find out the source of, it, of that infestation. So you're going to have to dig. It, it goes deep. Um, hopefully not too deep for, for the broad audience, but it will go deep. You and, got a lot of interesting uh, elements there. You oh yeah, monsters, the Harlem Renaissance. That's right. And steampunk. There you go. That is. Uh, where did this idea get? And from? alchemy. Yeah, and alchemy. There you go. So, where did that come from? That came from my crazy mind, um, along with the crazy minds of David Walker and Chuck Brown. So, we we initially had an idea to do something, just in the era, in the Harlem Renaissance um, era. And then it just started to grow from there. We started throwing a bunch of stuff in a pot and we made this big gumbo of crazy, fresh ideas. Uh, we did a lot of research. We didn't see anything quite like that. Not at all. Out I think, there. Yeah. I think um, that's why it stands you know, out so much. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it, it definitely got the attention of, uh, folks in Hollywood. So, you know, we're, we're just trying to, um, you know, um, do something that is really innovative. Uh, we just don't want to put out a comic to put it out to get yeah. to go to the next level per se. We want this to be a great story as well. That's our ultimate ambition is to just tell a great story, a very original, fresh story. And, and let me just say this part too. Um, I don't know if you were going to mention this, but you know, me and David Walker, we were at um, Marvel for mm-hmm. a while, and we worked on you know Power Man, Iron Fist, Luke Cage. Yep. I did some Black Panther stuff, and we realized, you know, we don't own these characters. As well as this, the, the the success of all that is, we just 
don't own this stuff. Yeah. So it was just a matter of like, okay, we're doing well. Now is the time to take that jump, if you will. And you know, it, that seems to be um, a, a trend that I've at least noticed myself is that you've got a lot of uh, creators uh, that will go do these projects for, say, a Marvel DC, get their name, get the hype behind them, and then right. they, they decide, okay, let me show you guys what I can do on my right. own. Here's my creator-owned stuff. Right. So I think it's a strategy that's that's fantastic. Right. And I'm really proud to know that um, you know you guys decided <laughs> to approach the um, creator-owned uh, route with such a unique and fresh perspective. I mean, uh, what other comic book is, is making the Harlem Renaissance? <laughs> even more cool you know? right and, and that's the thing about it it's like the Harlem Renaissance was just it was already an incredible uh rich you know tapestry of just just on its own yeah and to be able to throw this fantastical element in 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 it it just makes sense it's seamless if you will and you know what I, what I like about it is it doesn't like I, I get uh, educational sense like I'm learning about right you know, right the Harlem Renaissance while still enjoying the book that's I mean, right was yep. that kind of in the forefront like did you guys want to you know hey we need to shine a spotlight on on something as uh, amazing as harm renaissance but you know how did you guys keep that balance of educational and entertaining well i'll tell you what man that that's the thing that we probably was the most excited about because we were like man just to think that if we play our cards right we can not only like you said do this really great story mm -hmm. to keep to entertain we can hit this whole other audience, this whole other market, if you will, from an educational standpoint. As a matter of fact, um, we've got in the back of each issue scholars from all over the all over the world, really, um, doing essays, you know, based on Afrofuturism, um, the Harlem Renaissance, uh, just. Uh, culture black culture in general the, cool. the history i mean it's very rich i mean this thing is you know pretty pretty awesome in 15 and dense if you will um and um as a matter of fact we have several uh college level professors teaching curriculum high school as well teaching curriculum based on our book Wow, that is yeah, it's pretty cool. That is really awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and I believe uh, the first trade for Bitter Roots is coming out sometime. I believe in either May or June, but pretty soon, right? Uh, May. Yep, okay. May fifteenth. And when is the series gonna be? I guess relaunching. Um, that's a good question. To some degree, well, it's it's we have a pretty solid overall time period. It's gonna be in the fall. Okay. Um, September, October ish, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, you know, we're we're Working on, uh, well, like you said, the trade will be out um, May 15th, and then we will have a one-shot, uh, if you will, kind of an annual mm -hmm. that's dropping in June or July. So we got a lot of things still happening, Bitterroot-wise, and the, the one-shot will be uh, six creators or six stories based on um, each character. And we got um, some incredible creators coming in to do uh, five of those stories, I'll be doing one along with the other uh, creative team uh, will be working on uh, the entire story um, for each character. You brought up David Walker and your time working with him um, at Marvel on Power Man and Iron Fist and Black Panther and Luke Cage. I'm sure that when the news broke out earlier in March about, um, unfortunately, uh, Luke Cage and Iron Fist were going to be renewed Right. I imagine people probably, I mean, how did you take the news? Did people hit you up like, oh, man. Of course. Doing, yeah, everyone, everyone. Sending their condolences. Oh, well, but, sorry. you know, we kind of already knew hmm. the writing on the wall with that because of what's to come, right? Okay. And we all know what Disney is going to be doing. They're going to have the streaming. Where they land? Well, the streaming service is going to all be streaming. Now, when, that's a whole other thing. Okay. I, that we don't know. But um, the streaming service is, is very much in the forefront. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, speaking about uh, just your time at Marvel, one of my favorite bodies of work that you did was the hip-hop variant cover for Hawkeye. Yeah. You did it based on Pete Rock and C.L. Smooth's, um, I believe it was Mecca and the Soul. Brothers. Mecca, yep. Uh, and, you know, if you follow, if, if, listen, if you're following uh, Sanford on Twitter, you had posted something about, you know, just 
feeling really good about Pete Rock reaching out to you to do his album cover, which oh, I yeah. will be a, the next series of his Pete Strumental albums. Yeah. How is that experience getting to work with a, a hip hop icon? You know, <laughs> one of the greatest producers of, of hip hop of all time. There you go, so man. Top yeah. Five. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's surreal. It's full circle because, you know, coming up in, in, in high school, uh, you know, I think I was a junior or senior when Mecca came out. Yeah. And, um, Man, you know, just to to dream of I used to dream about working not only just with him but just any yeah. iconic figure, right? Mm. To to put my artwork with their with their body of work would be that was just something that was so far fetched for me, you know. Mm. But at the same time you have aspirations of doing something like that. And to have him reach out and um of course it really helped to have uh, the hip hop variant cover, uh, series to be a major part of that. <clears throat> it put me right in, you know, right in the, the pathway yeah. of all these creative, you know, legends in the, in the genre, in the hip hop genre. So it was just like, wow, I'm, I'm good friends with, um, plug one from De La Soul wow, now because cool. of that. Um, again, you know, you got Pete. Um, I know a few other, uh, creative, uh, types um in the industry more so behind the scenes folks I'll, i will share this c because it's not anything other than just a shout out ll kushe ll kujay shouted me out what? Um, on so yeah it was pretty oh, crazy dude, on twitter on. it was pretty cool so you know um that was pretty awesome i was like whoa man you're talking about you know one of the you're talking about you know you were saying pete i mean ll yeah, yeah. is like one of the Come on, yeah exactly right the figureheads there of this whole thing man you know so that's pretty crazy man and, but again that just it's i'm grateful for it and one thing that we always try to do on the show is is highlight and champion you know hip-hop and comic books how they tend to go hand in hand you know? right you got groups like wu-tang clan and even like some early nas lyrics he'd bring up comic books and it sounds like it's kind of prevalent for you where hip-hop and comic books were just hand in hand for you right bro well, yeah absolutely i mean Again, going back to, you know, as a, as a, uh, kid coming up, you know, in high school, um, middle school even, I would draw to hip hop music. Um, I would, uh, look at the, uh, album covers and get influence from, from them. Listen to the lyrics even and what they're saying. Hmm. A lot of it is fantastical, uh, bombastic hero villain esque type yeah. stories. Um, and I was just enthralled with all of that. And it's absolutely, you know, fell into my work, you know, seeing the music videos when, when that was such a thing, you yeah, know, yeah, you yeah. would, you would get super excited when you saw a KRS one boogie down productions video and see how just lively it is, how animated, how great the storytelling is from a uh, slick Rick or, uh, public enemy, which hmm. they were like the, the public enemy was like the Avengers to me, man. You know, yeah, it was yeah. just like, you know, seeing these guys and the personas that they brought. It was just incredible. So it's very, very, very much so a staple in my, in my work. Sanford, do you have time to read comic books? Do you, do you go into the comic shops, whatever your local one may be? And do you find time to pick up books on a weekly basis? Not a weekly basis, to be honest. Um, monthly, maybe. Monthly, definitely. Um, I am really uh, into getting the, I know this is kind of like the sacrilegious deal, but um, I'm really into um, the trades. Oh, no. I dude. said it. <laughs> yeah, I said it. But I, um, I also am a fan of the art. I know that sounds, uh, of course you would be, but the art is just one of, the, one of those things where it's like, there's so many great artists out there right now. Um, I'm really into James Heron. I don't know if you know his work. What, what about what, what he? He did. Uh, he did this book called Rumble, which oh, is yeah, pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty Fantastic. awesome with that. Feel free to look through for that. You can take one. Check it out if you like. But um, it. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh man, he's the first guy that came, comes off the top of my head. But you know, you get on social media like Instagram, and you see all these great illustrators. You get totally just enthralled with, you know, what they what they bring, what she or he brings mm -hmm. 
and you start following them. And the first thing I look for, do they have an art book? Cool. Uh, or si- comic series or something. So I'll go out and support. That's cool. Yeah. And Sanford, we got some people coming up to your table. Yeah. So I won't eat yeah, up yeah, too yeah. much of your time, but I do want to ask you, man, you got something that you want to champion today. What do I want to champion? Uh, Mr. Miracle. I think that was a, that was Fantastic a dope series. Chance. That was a dope series. I know that's kind of a, that's one of those upper, you know, easy, you know, easy but ones. Easy for a good reason. Easy you know? for a good it's reason. A reason. There's it's a real reason dope. It's, it's real dope. That. Well, I will say this also. Um, I will say this. Um, I'm trying to think of the name because I picked it up and I was just like, wow, this is just like super duper dope just with, um, what they're bringing in terms of it's a, it's, it's not a, oh, TKO, the company. Man. Yeah. Those we guys have are. been talking about TKO. Yeah. They, they're definitely the bringing three. some, they're bringing some, some stuff, man. I'm yeah. like, okay. They're fantastic. If there was, I'm just going to put it out there because they've already reached out to me about stuff, but that's the one place that besides Bitterroot, uh, from an independent standpoint, yeah. I might take a look at those guys. No, that but is- I love their format. I love their stories. Real dope. They're definitely stuff. here to change the game. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what they do. Yes, Sanford, sir. Sanford, I want to thank you so much for hopping on Absolutely. the mic with us. Our fans appreciate it. Yes, sir. Have a great rest of your collection. Absolutely, weekend, man. Absolutely, man. Absolutely.